Hi guys, Ross Overstreet with FLIR Science Segment at Photonics West. Today we want to talk about the types of IR cameras frequently used for science and R&D applications. Um, we have science grade cameras ranging in price from under $10,000 to over $100,000. So sometimes it's tough to figure out the best camera for the application. The good news is there are only two general categories of thermal IR cameras on the market. There's uncooled microblometers, which are the smaller handheld type cameras that we have here. And there are the higher performance cooled photon counting cameras like you see behind me here today. The thing that we use to help remember the differences we call the, the five S's. The first S is speed. Uncooled microbolometers are going to be limited to about 30 frames per second. This is because the detector on these cameras has a long thermal time constant between 8 and 12 milliseconds and no matter what the scene's doing, the detector just can't change temperature much faster than about 30 frames per second. Some of them read out at 50 or 60 frames per second, but faster than that just wouldn't make sense. The higher performance cooled cameras run at hundreds to thousands of frames per second. Our X6900 series can do 1,000 frames per second at 640 by 512, and the X8500 can do 180 frames per second at 1280 by 1024 pixel resolution. The second S is sensitivity. Uh, it's tough to see from the data sheets because the math is done differently when judging the sensitivity of the uncooled and the cooled cameras. But if you really dug in, you'd find that the cooled cameras are about three times as sensitive as the uncooled cameras. So if you're looking for very minuscule temperature changes, uh, like maybe you're doing uh, metabolic studies and you're looking at skin temperature differences or you're studying animals, uh, increased sensitivity of the cooled camera would be a great benefit. The third S is spatial resolution. Our cooled cameras generally offer higher pixel count than uncooled, although we do have megapixel in both now. And we have better optics or higher performance optics for the cooled cameras. The uncooled cameras, I can do everything from 25 micron per pixel microscopes to about six degree field of view telescopes. With the cooled cameras, I can get down to about four microns per pixel with the microscope. And I can get less than one degree horizontal field of view with the telescopes. Finally, we get to synchronization. Uncooled microbolometers don't offer a lot in the way of synchronization. You can gate the data. You can go, I don't care, don't care, don't care. Okay, record, record, record. Don't care anymore like that. But you can't send a trigger to the camera and have it produce an image for the next millisecond and send it back to you. With the cooled cameras, that's trivial. That's very easy to do. All of our cooled cameras offer a TTL input on the back where you can send a trigger, either to start a sequence of frames or you can control each individual frame that way. And finally, spectral response. Uncooled microbolometers are generally going to be long wave IR, 7.5 to 14 microns. Whereas the cooled cameras, you can purchase as 1.5 to 5 micron, standard 3 to 5 micron mid wave, uh, or we have some long wave options from like 7.5 to 10.5. Furthermore, with the cooled cameras, we can always install a filter either right behind the lens in a filter holder or in a filter wheel installed in the front of the camera, or you can have the camera built around the filter in the cold doer portion of the camera. So we offer a lot more spectral response options for the cooled cameras. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local FLIR science segment engineer. Thank you.